All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. This is lesson 4.4. This is going to be another long one, so just hang in there with us. Um, to start off, I, I have to uh, kind of go back to something in a prior video. In a prior video, we talked about electrical fundamentals, which was something that just kind of seemed out of place. It was uh, it was just kind of there. And then the other components of the lesson and subsequent lessons <clears throat> seem to have nothing to do with the electrical fundamentals. And even went as far as to, down on this page, you know, talk about the different things that, you know, I really wanted you to pay attention to and to be able to recognize them diagram. And then it just seems like we never talked about them again. And that is because, I don't know if you can see it up here, this uh, presentation was labeled as 4.1.1. So that means Unit 4, Lesson 1, Part 1. Uh, it turns out that this this value here should have been a four and uh, uh, so it, it should have been a four uh, so this was actually lesson four uh, unit four lesson four part one and uh, so it may be a good idea to go back and take a look at these you know take a look at this video uh, see a little bit about what was going on how everything works uh, there is the introduction of a breadboard and uh, and working with those circuits, and uh, we we talked about the battery. We talked about uh, how the charge flows from the negative to the positive, uh, how it creates the voltage. The voltage is equal to the amperage times the resistance, and all of those different formulas. Um, and then we just kind of left it, and we kind of left it there. And so now I'm going to come back to that, and I'm going to talk a little bit about resistors. So there's. What you need to know for this class, which is actually just in the first couple of slides, and then there's what we are actually going to do uh, for, for this class. Um, first thing I want to say is the hands-on component to this class. I really uh, I, I have to apologize. There's no other way I can say it. I feel sorry because there's some really cool stuff that we could do if we were in person, but now we have to uh, leave it to online resources. And... Uh, that's just, it is what it is, okay? And, and I'm sorry about that. Uh, but at least I was able to find something where you could kind of mimic a, a little bit of a hands-on element here. Uh, so talking about resistors, first of all, how a resistor works. If you remember, I mentioned it earlier, a resistor is to a current what a dam is to a stream. It just helps restrict the flow of electrons. Uh, so it makes it a little bit harder for the electrical flow to occur, to occur. And what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to show you what I did and then also give you, you, you know, this, this is a, a website that is free and you can go back and try and do what I, what I have done. And, uh, and, and so what we're going to do is we're going to create a simple circuit and you're going to be able to see the lights get dimmer and dimmer as we increase, as we increase the resistance. So, one of the things that you need to be able to do is to calculate the resistance using the resistor color scale. That was in the prior video as well. Okay, and we're going to do that when it comes to the simulation. So now under a, a normal uh, uh, under a normal system, uh, we would have these like in a box, and then you would uh, you would check and make sure that you that you do your your inventory any part of any lab, you're going to be doing an inventory. Now, the nice thing, since we're going to do this in a digital world, is that we're going to be able to set things up to, um, you know, to meet that criteria. And you would check, you would look for these different resistors to make sure that they were all there, the two LED lights, 9-volt battery, and, and, and so on. So, but we are going to, we're, we're going to build our own, okay? Um, then you're going to build this particular circuit. Now, you would follow the instructions, follow the visual guideline, but what we are going to build, this is, this is, uh, this is in a nutshell of what we're looking at. So you have the battery, which is going to connect to the leads here. Those leads, one end is, is, uh, runs to this board, and it's going to run, uh, if, if you remember, on the, the motherboard, a breadboard here, uh, they, it runs in rows, not in columns. And so what you can actually see are uh, a, a parallel circuit series. And these are two light emitting diodes here. 
and then they're going to come back and connect. You're going to run through a resistor. We are going to swap out the resistor, so that is this device here. And, uh, you know, we want it kind of separate so that way we can just very quickly swap our resistors and so that way you can see everything that happens. And then finally, you complete the circuit. So we're going to build this circuit digitally, okay, and, and that, that's one of the main things to look for. These are the instructions on how you would actually do this in a breadboard. And uh, you, you can see the, the locations. Locations are named. Locations are named. See the, the letters uh, A, B, C, D, and E. So every, every location has a, has a number as well as a letter. And so that's what we would do uh, if we were using the breadboard. Now, since we're going digital here, we don't have to follow this quite, uh, quite as much. And then, uh, so, so then we perform the experiment. What do you expect to happen? The greater the electron flow, the brighter the light. Okay, that's, that's going to be, you know, that, that should make sense because if this is running off of an electrical circuit, the more electricity that you have going into it, the better it should do up to a point. You don't want to overload it. The LED lights that we're going to use have very, very low amperage. Long story short, you get too many amps running through it, you'll blow the LEDs. And so we actually do need to have a resistor in there to make sure that we don't actually blow the LEDs. And then as you increase the resistance, fewer electrons should be able to get to the light, and therefore you should, uh, you should see the lights start to dim. And I'm actually going to demonstrate this in two ways that I can do online that are a little bit harder to do. Um, in person. So then what is the experiment? Once we set up our circuit you're going to start off with the 220 ohm resistor and connect the battery, look at the brightness, disconnect the battery, switch out the resistors and you're going to keep uh, increasing the resistors uh, and and seeing just kind of and just kind of seeing what happens and then here's just a couple of things to think about uh, in, in case it were not to work in person. And then finally, you know, you write down your observations. Okay, so I'm going to show you how I do this setup uh, digitally, and then this will be something that you can kind of carry over as we do the other component. Okay, so let's get into uh, working on this digitally. I am using the DCAC lab, uh, D DCA. CLAB.com. You can sign into it if you want to edit, if you want to edit any of the values, and you can sign into it just using your Google account. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to sign up. You, you know, there is the sign in using Google option. So I'm going to build that circuit that we were working with. This this thing up here is the scroll is the scroll bar. I want to, I've got, I've already made the resistors because I don't want to have to uh, uh, go through everything, you know, several times over. Um, so I went ahead and already made the resistors, but just to show you how to make them. So, so there's the resistor. I select the gear. And let's say that I want to make a, a 30, let's do a 3,500,000 ohm resistance. Okay, so that would be, so the first two numbers, 3 million and then, and then 500,000. But this is 35, so what do I need to multiply it by? I need to multiply it by 10 to the sixth. And so that would be, and if I if I count the numbers, if I count the numbers up right, oh, no, wait a minute, sorry, I, I don't need 10 to the sixth because that's, that's 35 times a million. I need 3.5, I, I need 3 to the 5th, there we go, and I can just check right here, I'm within 1%, I'm, in, I'm within 1% of tolerance, uh, between the 2 and the 5, there's my 1 comma, between the 3 and the 4, there's my other comma, so this is 3,482,000, all right, we're good, we are good, so if I wanted to control the rotation, I could do that here, and it, let, it allows me to select what's going on, and so that would be my, my resistor more, 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 more than, than, than I need for this little experiment, okay? But I just wanted to show you how you change that up, okay? Now, um, so I have my different uh, ohm resistors over here, ranging from the 220 to the 16,000. That was given in the, uh, that was given in the uh, experiment. 
Okay, I'm going to place my battery and I'm going to I'm going to rotate it uh, 90 degrees. My negative charge is down here. This is where the electron flow is going to generate from. So now I'm going to move that up here. I need a parallel. I need a parallel circuit for the uh, uh, for the lights. To draw a wire, you don't have to do anything. You just click. You just click and and you just click and pull, and it'll even bend the wire for you. That's a pretty nice feature. I can change the color of the wire, and just because because I can, um, I'm going to. Um, here here it is. There it is. Uh, the the wires that are not part of the parallel circuit, I'm going to do white, and the wires that are part of the parallel circuit, I'll do another color. So now I'm going to split. If it'll, if it'll let me, if it'll let me split, I'll do it. There we go. I'm going to split two wires. Sometimes it gets a little funny as to as to how it wants to go. Okay, uh, let's bend. Whoops, 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 whoops. Bend. So since I'm not holding it onto anything stationary, uh, you know what? I'll just leave it. I'll just leave it there. Okay. Uh, let's change. Let's change these to. Here we go. Let me do it this way. I'm going to change. It is just not wanting to work with me right now. You know what? I'll leave it as it is. All right. So let's let's put in the, uh, the LEDs. Now for this for this system, the LEDs have to uh, they have to plug into the same holes as the wires. On a breadboard, you wouldn't actually have to do that because the power uh, runs completely underneath. But here we have to. Uh, the breadboard is designed in a way where it, it, if you stay in the same row, you're running in a parallel circuit. Yes. Okay, um, so now I'm going to draw two more wires. I'm making them unusually long because I'm going to do I'm going to do something in, in the simulation here in a minute uh, that will change it. I want to change the color of this of this light. Let's go with blue. All right, bring another wire up, and. I'm going to put a resistor. I'm going to put a resistor here, but for right now, I just want to complete the circuit. Okay, I see. I see that the lights are on, or at least at least that one light is on, but uh, both lights aren't on. Both lights aren't on. So what? What's the problem? What's the problem? Well, part of the problem is this is this is like a double A battery. It's only this is only uh, one volt, well, one and a half volts. So I need to, this experiment was for a nine volt battery. So let's do that. And now it's not running at all. Now it's not running at all. So, uh, you, you know, quick question, what happened? Well, at, at nine volts, nine volts, you, you're, you're overloading, you're overloading the lights. You're overloading the lights. So um, now let's put in this, Oh, there it goes. There it goes. It was a little delayed. I blew the bulbs. <laughs> All right. Now we got the now we got the bulbs running. This one does not like to as I'm as I'm changing them. I keep blowing the bulbs. So what does that mean? You, you know, I've got I've got too much I've got too much power. I've got too much power running through these if I'm blowing both both the bulbs. So that would mean that I need to increase I need to increase the uh, the resistance. So let's let's take this. Now what happens when I put more resistance into the circuit? 
it's kind of hard to tell here, but what if we go with the next one? Now you can really see the lights are getting dimmer. They're getting they're getting a lot dimmer, and um, notice they're. If, if you were to really look now, that at this point they're barely on at all, and then finally when we get to this when we get to this maximum one here, uh, you'll see that like they're, they're not even they're not even turning on at all. You you do not meet the minimum amperage to to be able to see what's going on. Um, let me go back to this one. You'll actually uh, I don't see it. I don't I don't I don't see it in this one. So but. Let's do this now. Let's do this. Just so that way you can kind of see that this does create a, a, a change. Let me delete this line. I'm going to put in an additional resistor here. All right. So now I'm going to connect them. And so what, what this does is there's going to be more resistance on this upper bulb than on this lower bulb. So when I connect the resistors, you see, this bulb is very bright. This bulb didn't even light up, did not even light up until finally this one, until finally this one blew. So um, that's just a quick little example of how you can use this simulator to, to go through the different elements uh, as we are working with the electrical circuits, as we're working with the electrical circuits for, for now. Um, and it also brings out another point. Nine volt battery is too strong for a standard LED. You'll blow the bulb, at least in this simulation. And so you actually have to have a resistance in it. Otherwise, you you blow the light bulb. So I hope you enjoyed this little this little experiment. Feel free to go in and try this on your own again. This is this is DCAC Labs, and uh, uh, and we'll be using this we'll be using this a little bit more as we go through the other simulations. Okay, so in this section, when it comes to the electrical circuits, we're going to be looking at the potentiometer, which is a variable resistor. So it is uh, something that you can use to manually control, or electronically, depending, um, control how much resistance is going, is going to be into the circuit. So a potentiometer works uh, by as you in, in this case the, the the one that you would be using in in class that uh, there is a replica in the um, in the online lab is uh, you, you would manually turn a knob and that would control the resistance and, and so that's that's what we're going to be demonstrating with within this little lab so as before you know you need to take an inventory of the different parts and and see what happens so in the prior one we saw that as we increase the resistance the light bulb would get dimmer and so instead of actually having to manually switch out the resistors we're using a potentiometer which is going to allow us to change that resistance without having to you know change those resistors so you need the breadboard uh, this calls for a 100 ohms resistor the LED that the um, the LED that the online lab uses uh, cannot take the amperage from a nine volt battery and only having a 100 ohms resistor. So I'm going to have to use a 450 ohm resistor uh, in the online lab. So that's going to be a little bit that's going to be a little bit different in in this particular instance. So you have your LED, your potentiometer. Um, you have your nine volt battery lead, which is just what you connect your nine volt battery to, and then as well as your nine volt, as your nine volt battery. And so then you're going to build, you're going to build this circuit. So you have your battery from the negative end. You're going to run your resistor, which again this calls for 100, but we are going to use a 450 uh, resistor. You're going to connect it to your light, light emitting, your light emitting diode, and then you're going to also connect this to the potentiometer. There is a grounding wire uh, that can be used. That can be used for other things. We're not going to use. We're not going to use that one. So we're going to use this this center, uh, the center pin on the potentiometer, which is going to run directly from the light, and then you use the left pin to then make the uh, make the complete circuit back to the battery. Okay, so that that's what we're going to do. Uh, place the again for 
in the live lab, it would be a 100 ohm resistor, but uh, we're going to use 450 to keep the to keep the LED from burning out. And we're going to adjust the potentiometer to see to see what happens as we increase the resistance. The dimmer, uh, the LED should dim down. Okay, so an example of where you would use something like a potentiometer is. Uh, you can tell that, that this is a little bit of an old text because they're still talking about CD players instead of MP3 players or iPods. Uh, but, you know, adjusting the volume on the speakers, you use something like a potentiometer in order to do that. Okay. So install the resistor, LED, potentiometer, connect the battery, and then observe, observe the brightness of the LED. Turn the potentiometer and then see what happens. And then you have your trouble troubleshooting tips down here at the bottom. And then you would complete, uh, if this were a regular lab, you would complete the experiment by doing a write-up, a write-up about it. So I'm going to switch over to the digital lab now where we are going to recreate, where we're going to recreate this circuit. All right, so here we are back at the, at the DCAC lab. And I'm just going to build, I'm going to build the circuit really quickly. I'm going to rotate, I'm going to rotate everything. Remember, power always flows from the negative, from the negative charge uh, around to the positive. So I'm going to put in my resistor and uh, I've, I ran this, I ran this before and the, and, and uh, I use the V equals IR law. Uh, for for court that that relates current voltage and resistance, and I found that uh, 100 ohms. I was still just blowing. I was still just blowing the bulb, and uh, it's a it's a 20. Um, it's, the LEDs in this system, the LEDs in this system are uh, 20 milliamps, and so I would I would need to. Uh, do the calculations really quickly and I'll, I'll let you I'll let you know momentarily uh, what the minimum what the minimum uh, battery voltage what the minimum battery voltage would be it looks like it would be a two volt battery so like if I if I use this one one and a half volt I would be okay with 100 ohms but um, nine volts just would produce generate way too much current in order to do this all right, so we put in the resistor. I'm going to input an LED. I'm going to I'm going to rotate it uh, in a way that makes it easier. That makes it easier for me to make these connections. And this is something that I discovered um, in the kind of experimenting experimenting with this to to see what happens. Also, there are different kinds of potentiometers. Okay, they're not standard. And so what I found works is I need one that has a track resistance of up to 4,000 to really be able to see what's going on. So I'm going to set that, I'm going to connect my wires, and then, oh, I forgot to change my, my battery voltage. There we go, so nine. All right, and the light is on, and it doesn't, it doesn't look like it's blowing. And so now as I adjust, you can see it, it's hard to notice something like an LED because they are so low powered. I have to really start cranking up this resistance before you notice a difference in the lights. But when I've turned it on 100%, you can see that this light is certainly dimmer than when I when I have it. Oops. I don't know why it does that, okay, but uh, you can you can definitely see. So this is when I have no resistance in the potentiometer, and it's bright. Then as I Increase the resistance. Now, now the light. Now the light is dimmer. And just to show you, uh, so so that that's a potentiometer variable resistor. And uh, to, just to show you that I, I wasn't making this up. Let's go to the 100. Let's go to the 100 ohm resistor. And is it going to? Oh, that's that's because I had this turned up at 100 percent. So let me. Now watch it not watch it not actually blow this time. There it goes. All right. Yeah. See, so I blew the bulb uh, with only with only with only the 100 ohm resistor. If I did a 1.5 
volt battery, which that's your your uh, that's your triple A's and double A batteries. I think it should be okay. So let's let's see what happens. Oh wait, too late. I already blew the bulb. <laughs> let's try this again. All right, so I changed the voltage. There we go. And yeah, you can see here, you know, we're barely, uh, we're barely pulling enough amperage to even, to even light the bulb at this, at this point. So, um, let's bump this back down. Okay. So you can, you can see from here, um, you know, the, the nine volt was just pulling too much juice. So. That's something that does actually kind of concern me in the, uh, you know, in the real lab. I would have, I would definitely want to test that the day before. But there's your potentiometer, variable resistor. If I start cranking it up, uh, it's not going to light. Or yeah, not off, not off the one volt, not off the one volt. So, all right. So that's your potentiometer. I uh, hope you enjoyed this part, and uh, we'll see you. We'll see you in the. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so I'm going to have to take a little bit of a sidestep from, from the classic lesson here. Uh, we're talking about capacitors, which what a capacitor does is it stores charge. And then once that certain amount of charge is stored, then it can either be depleted at, uh, you know, very quickly or it can, uh, it, can, it, like, like it can be used to release all at once, which is like how camera flashes, uh, how camera, camera flashes work. Um, or it is something that can, uh, you know, maintain that charge and then de be depleted slowly. So uh, some examples of using it slow uh, to deplete slowly are for some devices, if they temporarily lose power over and, you know, only for a second or two, they don't shut off, they don't lose what they're doing. Uh, that would be a capacitor depleting that charge, allowing it to continue run for that extra little, you know, for that extra little moment. Uh, the another obvious example that I can think of, if you look at any kind of electronic equipment, and uh, you know, I, I can't name a particular device at at the moment. I know that uh, um, uh, the the TV that I have at my house will will do this, but there's a light that turns on when it's turned on. And then when you turn the power, that light stays on and then it slowly fades away. That is the capacitor kind of bleeding out and it's holding that charge for a little while, but they also take just a second or two in order to charge up. That's the purpose of a capacitor. Now I've run into some issues uh, in trying to do the simulation. So I'm not gonna do the simulation that was done, that was done in this lesson, but I want to show you how the basic setup will go. And once I get into the actual simulation, I'll, I'll explain why uh, uh, why I had to do a different one. So you're going to build the the original objective is building a, a simple circuit that shows how the capacitor is able to store electric energy. And the original intent is that as you put in a capacitor and they're, me they're, they're measured in farads. Uh, we have our two. We have our two type: the ceramic disc and the electrolytic. Uh, uh, the electrolytic, you do have to pay attention to the orientation; otherwise, it's not going to work. And so, it, it has a, a positive need, uh, a positive lead, and a negative lead. Uh, whereas the the ceramic just plug in. They're measured in farads, and uh, there's also if you see this kind of U in front of it, that's a microfarad or farad, and then P is a pico, which uh, micro is one millionth, and if I remember correctly, pico is one billionth. Okay, so uh, you use these for you know anywhere from incredibly high power to also incredibly low power. Um, so the experiment that we would run with, you, you have different resistors, the 1,300, you have your different capacitors, 1,000 and 100 uh, microfarads. 
your LED, your nine volt battery and connection, as well as uh, uh, two wires to, to help bring in all of the connections. And what you would make is this circuit, which uh, looks like which looks like this on the breadboard. So um, I'm going to build something that kind of bypasses that, and it has to do with the LED and the calculation of capacitance. I'm not entirely sure what kind of capacitor they're using. I think those look like the electrolytic. Those, those look like the electrolytic. And so I'll talk about that more in just a moment. But so when the, uh, when the electron flow is present, the LED is going to be bright. The capacitors are able to store that electricity. So one of the first things that you're going to see is the light may not turn on immediately because that means that charge is going into the capacitor. And then once the capacitor is full, then, you know, think about, uh, I used to do this. I used to do this when I was growing up. Uh, I would go down to the stream that was close to my house and uh, I would like kind of build part of a dam and then I, I would block it off. And before the water could go over the dam, it would have to fill up and then the water could, and then the water could go. And that's kind of what's happening. That's kind of what's happening here. Um, you know, think about if you are letting water run through a sink and then suddenly you plug it up. Most sinks, any of the ones I've ever seen, have those little holes at the top to keep the sink from ever overflowing if, if it were to get completely clogged. Well, before the water can get through those holes, it has to fill up. And, and so when we're charging the capacitor, that, that's going to be why we don't see the LED turn on as, as quickly in my simulation. When the electrons will charge the capacitor. Now, uh, when the battery is removed, when you take the battery out of the equation, there's still power in that capacitor that would allow the light to run, and you would see the light slowly dim down as the capacitor is being discharged. That's the part of the experiment that I have not been able to get to work very well. Uh, so then you would perform this on your own, and then finally write your observations. So let's take a look at the experiment, uh, experiment and then I will explain why, uh, uh, why I'm running into some issues. Okay, so here I've created a bit of a circuit. I'm going to explain why um, why I'm running into some issues. They they have um, given me they have given me uh, there there's these kits that we are supposed to use in in the slides. The LEDs in this program run off of 20 milliamps and. Um, I have no idea what the LEDs run off of in those kits because on multiple occasions, on multiple occasions, the resistors that they've told me to use in place are, uh, end up blowing the light bulbs in the simulations. Okay. And so what that means is that, what that tells me is that the, uh, uh, the LEDs that are used in those kits have a higher amperage requirement than the LEDs that are in the simulation. And since I don't know what those LEDs run off of, I don't know what their power, what their uh, 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 power usage is, I have to kind of improvise. I was able to figure it out and, and find a workaround with the potentiometer as well as the resistors. Here I have, I'm running into some issues. So um, I'm, I'm doing a, a slightly modified version, we're still going to get the idea of what happens with capacitance, but it, it's going to be in a different uh, manner. So the voltage comes out of this resistor. It, it, uh, we have the, I have this one resistor here, which is, so it's got yellow, green, and brown with a tolerance of 1%. Uh, try and see if you can figure out what that resistor is before I tell you. So I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you three seconds to pause the video. Uh, that way you, you can uh, uh, go and, and figure it out. Okay, so if you tried this, tried to see what the resistor is, um, it, what you get is a 450. So uh, four, well, this four means 40, and then uh, plus five, so then that's 45, but then this is times 10, 
on each one of these. So instead of 40, it's going to be 400 plus 50. So this is a this is a 450 resistor. Okay, it's the one that's the one that I've used before. And so I've got everything connected. I have everything connected to the battery. Let me pull let me pull that off for just a second. All right. So the electrons are going to flow out of the battery. They're going to go through the resistor. This is going to keep us from blowing the battery, hopefully. And then it's going to go into this capacitor. Now, what I have is a series relay here. So before this bulb will light, the capacitor has to fill up completely. And so what we should see here is we should see a delay before the LED lights up. And then I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that when I disconnect the battery that you'll see the... Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to disconnect the battery from this lead, and then we should see the battery fade, but it may not. I don't know uh, what all the parameters are for this, uh, uh, for this particular uh, uh, program. But So let's connect it. You are going to see it take a few seconds before the bulb lights up, and then we're going to see what happens when I disconnect the battery. So there, it's, it took a few seconds before it started to flash. Now it's kind of flashing because the capacitor is, is discharging a little bit as the light turns on. And so then it's got to build up that charge again. So we're getting this kind of like flashing. And there it goes. Finally, it, it has uh, turned on. Now let me, uh, let, let, let's let it run again. All right, now if I disconnect it. Okay, so for this one, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't hold the charge enough. Uh, but... So, so we don't get to see the light. We don't get to see the light dim like we would in, in the real lab. But what we do see is it takes it a few seconds before that light does finally turn on. And uh, I still overloaded the battery in this case and, uh, and blew the bulb. But you were able to see the capacitor had to fill before the light bulb was able to turn on. So I hope that you enjoy this component. And uh, we'll move on to the next one momentarily. All right, so this next section uh, involves a involves a speaker, which um, the the lab that I have been using does not have a speaker. So what I did do was I, I rigged up a uh, a little fan. I think uh, I rigged up a little fan to run, and I even put a switch on it just so that you can see you know turn on and turn off. Uh, but unfortunately, we don't have the speaker. But I do want to go through this and just give a, a, a very quick explanation about what is the speaker and you know how does it work. Um, you see the design set up here. Uh, what you would need. Uh, I followed. I followed uh, the building components, uh, except so I used a 10 ohms resistor. I didn't use a speaker. Instead, I used a fan. And uh, uh, but other than that, I I built I built the setup. In a, in a similar fashion. I did add a switch. I did add a switch to it just so that way I could turn it on and turn it off, but I could take that out pretty easily. And, um, you know, so that way it looks more like this setup. And I built it in the same manner. Uh, from the, uh, you know, from the battery, from the battery, you would then connect the power that leads it to the resistor. The charge is then going to go to the speaker. The speaker will make a sound uh, and then power returns to the battery. So where they, in the instructions, they say just to plug it in and plug it out, so that way you can hear the, uh, uh, the noise. Since we can't do that, I tossed in a switch, so that way we could see it a little bit easier. But uh, we, can, we can still do it that way as well. All right, so um, the goal of this one was to make a clicking noise. We can't do that because, it, and, and I can't even simulate it in this case, because I don't have a speaker. And so I do apologize for that. But I do like how it explains how the speaker works. Okay, the speaker has a coil of wires that when an electrical current is applied to it, it, it makes an electromagnetic field. Technically, any time that current is applied to a wire, it, it generates an electromagnetic field. But if you coil the wire, that intensifies the electromagnetic field. And, uh, and so you can make it stronger. So, so that's what the coiling does, is we're generating a stronger electromagnetic field. The speaker has a magnet attached in it. And then that, uh, that magnet is attached to some kind of, of flexible material in, in the uh, in this case it's a paper cone okay in some in some uh, speakers it's a membrane and some it's actually a very thin wire membrane that uh, that can flex when it's powered the electromagnet is attracted to the permanent magnet causing 
uh, causing the wafer to move. And that movement moves air. And it's, the, and it's the movement of air that actually creates the sound. So, uh, and then now getting into this last piece, short, the short sound uh, will be heard only when you connect and disconnect the wire from the speaker, okay? Uh, that one doesn't apply to us, unfortunately, because, of, again, I can't do this. And so um, from here, you would do the experiment. Uh, again, I don't have that, but I did just set up a fan just so that way you can see kind of a little bit about what is going on here. I, I, uh, I, was, I was surprised that this program didn't, didn't have the speaker to it, but then also, you, you know, you try it out a little bit, what did you learn? And then you would write you would write this down. So let's take a look at what what happens with this when uh, running a fan. But uh, again, you know, unfortunately, we don't have the speaker. Okay, so here you can see I have just a basic setup, um, pretty similar to what was given in the instructions. From the battery, I go to the resistor. This is where the speaker this is where the speaker would be. And then I installed a switch that allows me to turn it on. And then you can see that the current is running. Which, which powers powers the fan, and then, of course, I can turn it off. But uh, I could also have just done a straight connection and a little bit more in tune with, with what the uh, instructions are telling you to do is you would connect and then disconnect, and that's what would cause, that's what would cause the sound. Now, for this, I pose the question before I get into it, uh, why? Why can I not just do this and then expect the speaker to continue to make noise? Think about that. Think about that for a minute. And think about think about that for a minute. And then and, and then we'll kind of take a look at why can't we just plug it in and leave it in? We leave, leave the leave the cables in and expect it to continuously make noise. Why in the experiment do they say disconnect and then connect, disconnect and then connect? Okay, so we're gonna take a look at the question on why why can't we just leave the speaker plugged in? What is going on that, that, that is preve preventing it from uh, making, why would it not make sound if we just plug it in and leave it in? So there's a magnet, there's a magnet attached, there's a magnet attached to this wafer. And when you turn the power on, that current then turns on the electromagnet down here at the base. And so then that magnet will deflect. And when it deflects, it moves, it moves air. When it deflects, it moves air. And then when you turn off the power, it goes back. When you turn it on, it gets pulled back down. When you turn it off, it gets pulled back. And so this motion, this, this uh, wafer moving up and down incredibly, incredibly fast generates, uh, you know, moves the air. And it moves the air in, in waves. And it moves the air in waves. So it's actually the motion of that wafer that pushes the air, that creates the that can create the compression waves that then we hear, that we interpret the sound. So if, if all we did was, was turn it on, that wave would move down, or, or sorry, that, that wafer would move down like we have it here, and then it would stay. So there would be this, there'd be this one wave, there'd be this one wave, and that wave would, uh, that wave would drift off, and that's it there'd be nothing else. Then when you uh, then when you turn it off, it goes back up here, there's another there's another wave that gets generated and then it would move on. So unless that wafer is moving, unless it's being turned off and turned on, uh, it's it's not going to sorry, I, I, I un undid one too many times. It, and, unless it's turned off and turned on several times where it's cycling, where it's cycling back and forth between, let's see if, if I can, nope, I lost it. All right. But unless it's turned off and turned on again, it doesn't move the air. So that's why in the experiment you had to, uh, it, it says to like plug it in and then unplug it and then plug it in and then unplug it.
okay, we are getting into the home stretch of this. So uh, you're going to get tired of me saying this before this video is over. I do apologize that we don't get to work on this in person. I do encourage that you go in and try some of this stuff on the on the da, uh, DCAC lab uh, for yourself. So that way you can see a little bit more about what's going on. And even though we can present the principles of this in the digital format uh, that we're doing here, you know, it's still just not the same as when you actually get to get to uh, do all of this with your, you know, with your hands and really get to look in at the at the individual components. And so we're looking at a diode, although we've been dealing with the diode the entire time. LED stands for light emitting diode. And so we've been using LEDs this, this entire time. But we're going to break this down a little bit more and more specifically just take a look. What is a diode and what does it do? And so what are we doing in here? We're going to build a simple, uh, simple circuit that shows that the diode allows the electrical current to flow in a single direction. So uh, when, I think, uh, when, when I think of using a diode on an electrical circuit, I think the difference between using a garden hose and, you know, just taking a bucket of water and then throwing it. You know, obviously when, when you throw the bucket of water, uh, unless, unless you throw it incredibly fast, the water just spreads out and it goes and it kind of goes everywhere. Whereas when you use a diode, it, it channels and allows uh, only one directional flow of the current. So what we're going to do to build this, uh, to build this system uh, is described here. Once again, I had to up the, the resistance on mine because I kept, blowing, I kept blowing the bulb. So I did, in the digital simulation, I used a 450 ohms res resistor, whereas uh, in, the, in the kit, the standard 220 ohms should be enough. Everything else, everything else kind of stays the same. And so you build this schematic. So you connect the battery to the, uh, from, from the negative port to the cathode end of the, of the diode. So this is the standard diode, and this is the LED. And uh, then from there, you run a connection to the resistor and then to the LED back to the battery. And so then that's, that's what we're doing. Uh, in in an active lab, your, uh, it would look more like this. So... Um, and then you're going to see that you're going to see that in my in my digital in, in my digital simulation. So if there's an electrical current, the LED will light up. So if the diode is facing the correct uh, direction, then then it'll light up. And if it's not facing the right direction, then you're going to see either significantly less light or no light at all. It depends on the strength of the diode because if the diode uh, only reduces some of the current, there may still be enough to light up. Uh, the LED. And that's the problem with LEDs. Le LEDs are so low energy that, uh, you know, even a little bit of current can turn them on. So we do have to play with those numbers a little bit. Um, since the diodes uh, keep electrons, uh, they, they, they channel the direction of, um, of the current, then you can use those in logic circuits and computers where, where you kind of run if-then type situations. And it also keeps, uh, you know, delicate parts of an electrical circuit from being overloaded if, if possible because uh, it, it keeps energy from bleeding off into those, into those areas. So we're going to connect the battery. We're going to observe the LED. We're going to dis... Now, I'm going to do a little bit different from here, but you would disconnect the battery uh, take take the diode out, uh, reverse its direction, and then see what happens to the LED, and then you're right about it. So let's take a look at how. This okay, so I have everything set up here and into the the system that was that was drawn in uh, in the PDF. So from the battery, I'm going to run a line that connects to uh, the cathode of the diode, and then the anode, which and then another cable that connects to the resistor. The resistor then connects to the LED and then the LED connects to the back of the ba uh, back to the battery. So, um, so now if I can move this cable, I connect the battery. We see that the light turns on, and then I'm going to take out the diode. I'm going to flip its direction. I'm going to put it back in. Re reconnect the battery, and you see that the battery doesn't turn on. Okay, and if you actually pay attention to these numbers here, uh, this is about 322 microamps, uh, microamps 
this LED is rated for 20 milliamps. So there's about one one thousandth the amount of power that it needs in order to actually, uh, for in order for it to actually turn on. If I when I flip the diode around again, that's going to allow that's going to allow for the uh, for the current to to flow better. And so then we see it light up. And so you can see here there is uh, four point uh, four point three one milliamps, and uh, so we're getting enough power to this LED in order to light it. Okay, uh, we're getting enough power to light it, but we're not exceeding the twenty milliamps. That way we don't that way we don't blow the bulb. Again, just just as a uh, oops, that's not what I wanted. I wanted the resistor here. So let me see if I can let me see if I can. Uh, is it going to let me get the resistor? All right, so here we go. Let's go back to the 220. Now, when I when I ran this when I ran this earlier, it blew the bulb. So let's see what happens. Let's see if it's going to blow it. Is it actually going to maintain this time? Yeah, I guess we're I guess we're okay this time. Uh, when I ran it earlier, it blew. Uh, there may be just enough resistance here. Um, let's try. Let's just try 100. You know what? This diode is creating is creating a little bit of resistance as well. I forgot about that. So, um, so we should we should be okay in that. We should be okay in that situation. There we go. I don't know if you saw the the, uh, the amperage there, but it was 76, 76 milliamps and blew the bulb. So kind of did a MythBusters there. Wanted to see the explosion. Okay, so let's take a look at the last part of when it comes to running the simulations, and then we we still have one more where we actually get into the different kind of calculations. I, I mentioned like I had to change resistance on certain things, and I had to I had to up this or change that. And I was doing that. I was doing that by the calculations. That's the next. That is the next component. Um, and so we'll look at that one in a minute. But for right now, let's look at a transistor or an NPN, negative, positive, negative. Okay. These are, uh, you know, if you've ever heard of like the old transistor radios and things like that, you know, transistors um, can act as an amplifier. Okay. And and so couple things about transistors. The flat side, which is where the writing is, is, is the when we're trying to determine what is the collector, the base, and the emitter, that flat side needs to face up, not face down. It needs to face up. And then based off of the orientation of the, the lettering and uh, numbering, you, you figure out which one is the collector, the base, and the emitter wire. The base is always in the middle. Okay, so for the setup of this, we were going to look at a, at a how a transistor could uh, dim and brighten uh, lights in an electrical circuit. And so I'm going to follow this one fairly closely, but once again, you're going to, um, I run into that I end up, that I end up blowing the bulb. And if uh, I would, I, I probably need to change this resistance. I probably need to change this resistance. And so I'll bump it up to about 450. But for right now, I am running it as close as I can to this particular setup. And uh, so you need all of the different elements. This symbol here is the, is the switch. Uh, the, uh, the, the program does not allow for me to use a push button switch. And so I actually have like a, you know, flick on, flick off switch. And so I put all of these in, I uh, put all of those items in, and then I build, I build this circuit here. This is how it would look like in real life. Mine is going to look a little bit different, but there is going to be quite a mess of cables running through it, just like, uh, just like in this one. So what do we know? Electrons are not going to flow. Um, they're not going to flow through the emitter collector. Sorry, I was I was uh, I got ahead of myself. You know, the uh, current flowing through the LED is something that we already know. And, and so if there's no current or not enough current, it's not going to go through the uh, it's, then the LED is not going to light up. But now we have this next little condition here. Electrons are not going to flow through the emitter collector until there is a current through the emitter base combination. 
So it, in order to get that current running, we have to get the em emitter base running. And so that's where that switch is going to come into play. Uh, this makes a small current uh, control a large current, which is referred to as amplification. So you can use a, a small amount of power to, uh, to turn on or turn off a large amount of power. An increase of current through the emitter base will result in larger current through the emitter collector side of the current. And, and so in this way, you know, I kind of like, I like to think of this one as whenever you have stream tributaries all coming together and it creates a much larger stream. And then lastly here, so if you change the 3.3K uh, uh, ohm resistor, uh, you'll see a change in the LED uh, brightness. I'm not going to work with that one too terribly much, but then this is the procedure that we are going to pseudo uh, follow. So let's take a look and see what happens. Okay, so um, I did I did the setup, but this is this is also part of the challenge in, in, in looking at a, a real environment versus a, a virtual or digital environment. Is um, in in the real environment, there's there are elements within the LED that tell us that tell us the anode and the cathode. Okay, uh, here you just kind of have to base base it off of the initial orientation. You notice that even though I have everything connected, there's no there's no power flowing, and it's because this LED up here, I'm going to change it uh, to be blue. This blue LED is in backwards, and so I need to uh, rotate it in such a way where now the connections are made properly. And and how I know these connections are made has to do with this like little flag looking thing here that's in the middle. And so then once I I plug it in, I have my uh, I have my transistor off. You see. 5.1 pico amps. And that is an incredibly, incredibly, incredibly uh, small amount that's running that's running through. But when I turn on, you see I go to 26.33 amps, which is a little. Uh, it's too much, too much for this light. <clears throat> it, it was at 26, and the maximum was going to be 20. And so that's why that's why this particular light blue, but um, this one down here, the red light is uh, still just 2.11 milliamps instead of instead of 20. So this light, this light's going to stay on even wh whether I turn it, you know, whether I turn it on or whether whether I don't. Um, let me let me try and increase this up to the 450 that, that I'm used to. Let me change this back over to blue and hopefully Hopefully this will work this time. I, I didn't try this one before, so I'm, I'm totally taking a shot in the dark here. And so now I put it in. There we go. You see that you're running 13.02 milliamps. So that bulb's not going to glow. Uh, not. It, it is. It is not going to uh, uh, blow. It's not going to break. And but notice, you know, take take a look at the numbers. Okay, from from this particular uh, line. You're running 15, 15.2 milliamps, and uh, and here I'm running 13. Point, uh, sorry, 15.12, and here you're running 13.02, and then 2.1. Okay, these two numbers add up to be the same amount. They add up to be the same amount. When I turn off the switch, though, you, you see that the total amperage. There's no amperage that's running through this central line here. It's all running on the outside, and it's back to that 5.1 uh, pico amps. And then when I turn it on, uh, we then increase our amperage. We go from pico amps to milliamps, which is you know a, a thousand times, a thousand times stronger. Still very low electrical current in this in this case, but uh, that's what the NPN does: is it helps boost, it helps boost that process from when you turn it on and when when you turn it off. 